All right. Very cool. Hey, everybody. And I'm um, here today with my very special guest, John Davison. Thank you for joining. Hello, everybody. Yeah. So um, I met John not all that long ago. I think we might have met on a, a Cruise to the Edge uh, experience or something like that. Yeah, the last um, one. Yeah. Yeah. But I've been lucky enough to see him perform uh, with Yes. And uh, I know a bit about uh, John's background with all the music that he's made. Of course, he didn't just land on the planet and just start singing with Yes. He's had a lot of musical uh, experiences and background. And, uh, and it's great to be here with you. And I'm really looking forward to listening to this album because it is probably in my top two of uh, all the yeah. music that, that, that I love. It's, a, it's an album that I just hold really close to my heart. And uh, mm -hmm. to share it with you, and you've had the experience of singing it with some of the original creators, and of course, doing an amazingly beautiful job of singing it, and oh. you know, projecting that energy yourself, which is, as we know, Thank it's you. just a wonderful headspace to be in. So yes, uh, it great is. to have great. Yeah, yes, it is great to have you here with me, my friend. Thank yeah, you so much. Awesome. It's an honor, and I agree. It's one of the top. It's probably my top two as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's just so beautiful. Yeah. So is it uh, is it one of your favorite yes uh, pieces of music to sing when you, yes. when you do it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we, you know, for years we were doing it as a whole album from beginning to end <clears throat> as part of our album series. Um, at the time, Chris Squire, bless his heart and his memory, he was still with us, I believe, right. um, for a lot of 2014 and most of 2015. We'd go out and do, at that time, we were doing all of Fragile and all of Close to the Edge. Wow. That and one so show, intense. one whopping performance across six yeah. days a week. Wow. And uh, I, I saw the introduction that you had created to promote tonight, and uh, or today where you are. I'm in England. But um, right, right. there were some video clips of me that I appreciated you putting in there. But... You know, it kind of took me back to that very time I'm thinking of. And I look so tired in those videos. And I just remember that <laughs> it was a good tired, though, how, how awesome it felt to be singing that six days a week and, and just yeah, really going must, for it. Yeah, that must, it's, it must be just emotionally draining. Because it, yes. it's just but in a good way projecting. As well. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I can yeah. kind of relate that to, uh, I've been doing these solo piano shows and the experience of doing the solo shows is very different than, than the energy projection experience is very different than I'm with a band. But in your case, being the center and the vocalist, it's kind of like whenever you're doing what you're doing, you can't, oh, okay, I'm singing now, but it's more about the guitar play. I, you know, you got to be like really, really on, especially in that kind of music. You do. And you so always have to be. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And you always have to be looking ahead, ready for the next curve because things come so fast and furious in that music um, on all levels. Um, like you said, you know, it's not about one instrument. Everybody has their place and things are coming in and out and there's all these dynamics. And of course, the words being ab beautifully abstract which don't really, you know, the, they're the most challenging words to memorize because you don't have much say. of a semblance to refer to. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, I totally get that. I remember hearing about, I don't know if, it, I think it was real, but that there was a place online that you could go to to automatically generate yes type, John Anderson type lyrics. Did you ever hear about oh, that? Oh, wow. I think I have vaguely. That sounds familiar, but remind me of it. It's interesting. It's just a funny idea. That's it. It might be. You know, maybe one of our viewers knows about it. But you could go to a website and say, "Okay, generate like uh, you know some some yes style lyrics," and would just do it. The yeah. computer would just do it. You, yeah, you've <laughs> got to have like a couple key words in that. You've got to have a river. So river, uh, fusion mm. is another important one, and mm. there are several sort of Anderson isms that are essential Hope, I dreams think. <laughs> love and, yes uh, all oh the, yeah all the, yeah amazingly uh cool and i mean that whole headspace was so great i, I remember mm -hmm. like listening to some of that music and just feeling like 
you know, looking up like at the skies and just going, oh, I feel like it's coming directly from the heavens, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's certainly, um, I guess the word is sort of magic, I, more than any other rock band. And there are a lot of progressive rock bands that touched on that sort of surreal, magical kind of thing. But I think above all else, Yes Music's perhaps the most majestic, touching yeah. on so many elements might have just frozen there i think we have a williams influence comes there across sometimes i mean all the elements thrown into that folk and you name it and of course <clears> you know <throat> what a unique blend of will but um very majestic i guess that's the word i'd use yeah absolutely me too i mean it's like some of the themes like even the the uh just the melodic instrumental themes like yes. there's one, there's one particularly on uh, on and you and I, and whenever I listen to it, I'm thinking, where did that come from? Like, what was the day that, like maybe like Rick Wakeman put his hands on the chords and Steve Howe like found the melody and like, what kind of beams of light like came down and and you know merged with them to to write those melodies and chords it's just amazing yeah. and i know that progressive musicians all over the world for years have, have been inspired by that and trying to to understand that energy and re kind of like continue that you know continue that state of mind and that state of music yes right that's very true absolutely and and at the same time it was actually quite uncluttered in the sense that there's all these different parts happening, structures developing, but themes are repeated and reinterpreted. <laughs> so as we listen today, people sort of analyze that. It's sort of fun to think like, for example, taking you and I, and if you take some of John Anderson's main vocal themes, say in the beginning, the Seeds of Life section, that's all repeated. That same sort of blueprint is then applied there as it is to the other part when we come in with the, where Chris Squire used to play the harmonica live in that section, it's actually sort of one sort of bookended theme that is then taken and reinterpreted rather than <clears throat> thinking, well, we, we've done this part. Now we've got to progressively go to another thing and another thing. Yeah. It was actually in more classical theme. I'm sure you agree that themes have really worked in, in many different, with different shades the same themes are reappear constantly. Yeah, I mean that's it's totally like a classical thing. And what's interesting yeah. to me, I was lis I was listening to the album and kind of, you know, preparation to listen to it again with everybody and just reacquainting myself with it. And the first thing that struck me was the fact that everybody, it's it's like I almost related it to like a, a, a gentle giant approach. Although gentle giant's music is totally like different. But what I found to be a similarity is that everybody like developed their parts and their parts are very unique. Like, you know, Chris Carr is doing this guitar thing with this shape and this movement, you know, uh, yeah. you know, how is doing something else and it all merges together. And then there's this melody on top of it. It's not the standard kind of like, you know, put your hand like on a piano and play like singer songwriter kind of like piano and have melody over it or just strumming right. chords. It's very much part driven for everybody and then okay let's invent like a melody over it and the way that it fits together to me created the really uniqueness of what we hear yes yeah you're absolutely right and it's interesting when we would be working these songs up that was just as exciting as actually being on stage where um you would hear each band member trying to sort of navigate with the others and explain how they interpret things. In other words, Alan and Chris were counting something in it, counting a, a transition or a part in a totally different way than the way Steve counts it. They all have their mm -hmm. own little way of seeing the song and somehow it all congeals beautifully <clears throat> and harmoniously. Yeah, that, that's so interesting. I, mean, I find that all the time, like with um, when I'm working stuff out with Dream Theater and we do these very progressive sections, it's like I'll feel it 
in this particular way and somebody else yeah. feels it in a totally different way. And if I try to get them to feel it the way that I'm feeling it, it'll totally mess yes. them up. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's it. Espe yeah. Especially on our new album, which was like a lot of it was like, okay, Mangini's playing in 23, eight, but uh, okay. But oh, you play God. in four, four and you play in seven, eight, and let's see where it wraps around. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well that's confusing, but yeah, but a little bit, but that energy, that is a real prog thing where everybody's playing in, their, really in their own space and time. Yeah. But it works yeah. out. But it works out. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. before we go uh, to um, a Patreon only thing and we leave our Facebook and YouTube um, visitors, tell me how you've been doing with this whole uh, lockdown and, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess it all starts when, you know, Cruise to the Edge. Well, I guess that was 2020. Yes, of course it was. The two. It feels so long ago in so many ways. But that was the Cruise to the Edge 2020. You and I were talking uh, numerously because we had plans to do some performance together, didn't we? And That's right. then, a, That's right. yeah, and I sort of, I actually have a memory of I think text you saying, yeah, it, it just came through. Yes, has backed out of the cruise. And how devastating that felt, and that, and it felt right. like a week later the whole world went crazy. That's when the bomb dropped. Right. right. And uh, totally. I was actually in. I had just finished a small U.S. tour with John Lodge of the Moody Blues, <clears throat> yeah. and the the connection there is during the 2019 cruise to the Edge. I had met his daughter, his manager, on the boat. We fell in love and have been together ever since. Oh. But um, she got me sort of involved with his band, which is such a great honor. That's a whole other story. But we wow. had gone to Barbados. They have a family home there. We we had a, maybe 10 days between his tour finishing and when Cruise to the Edge was going to kick off. So we went to Barbados, ended up being stuck there. Um, if you can imagine being stuck in paradise, it, wow. probably a lot of people are thinking, <laughs> oh, life is rough. But believe me, paradise is brilliant into vacation in but to right. actually survive there and overcome all the COVID obstacles uh, it, it was really something and we were there till yeah. about my memory serves me correct I think till about June of 220, 2020 um, luckily what kept me sane there was not only having Emily's love and support but yes started working on a new album so I was able to just dive into an escape world of creativity, which saved me. And that's really, here we are all this time later, and we're still working on this album and putting, pouring all our love and hard work into it. And it's just so exciting and fabulous. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. So you're doing a lot it's of really stuff what I've been like time. this. Yeah, so you've been doing things like sending files and stuff like that uh, and yeah. working that way. Yeah. Yeah. And then as soon as I was able to come back last year, last summer, Steve and I have been getting together at the studio that we've been working in. So um, unfortunately, Alan and Billy couldn't come across to this side of the pond. But right. Jeff, Steve and myself have been able to actually physically be together for a lot of it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice to, to have that. So we are going yeah. to uh, actually be listening to all of Close to the Edge together and with everybody that's on Patreon. So I invite everybody that's out there to uh, check out the link that'll be right in front of you to uh, keep uh, joining us for this um, listening experience. We're going to be talking about the album uh, and having a really cool time with everybody and people will get to ask John questions uh, as well. And uh, we're about to make that shift. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us here. And now we will transition to uh, Patreon only. So just give us a minute and we will do that. All right.